Well, I recently got dozens of comments stating I was totally wrong about EVs, not needing servicing. All of them mentioned things like suspension bushes, ball joints, brake pads, refrigerant, ga refrigerant gas, and cabin filters, amongst other things. Unfortunately, you're all totally wrong. Have a look at your fridge. Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, I've got a lovely fridge. Well, it's actually a fridge freezer. It's got two doors, top and bottom, and when you open one, there's a little micro switch inside. It operates and it turns on a light so I can see what I'm looking for. Uh, it's got a temperature sensor in there so that whatever temperature I set on the dial, it's always at the correct temperature. And around the back, it's a load of gubbins, it's got compressors, condensers, pipework, refrigerant, gas, I don't know what it is. And of course, when I bought it, I took out the Zanussi service agreement. And the Zanussi engineer arrives once a year to service it. Well, now, of course it didn't. Now, not only is it Zanussi, but nobody else offers a regular service agreement because a fridge is a non-serviceable item. Well, I ought to explain here what is servicing and what is maintenance, because the definitions seem to come down to they're pretty much the same. They are actions designed to keep your device in tip-top uh, form and extend the life of it that it might otherwise have. So an example, an oil change. You don't need ever to change your oil. You could run your engine until it fails, and it will. <laughs> but a simple oil change prevents that happening too soon. Oil and filter changes extend the life of the device and engine that it might otherwise have if the oil was not changed. Okay, well, fan belts and drive belts would be another one. You definitely want, uh, want, want neither of these to fail because either could destroy the engine. So here, you change the drive belt before it fails to extend the life of the engine and prevent it failing. So the key here is to extend the life of a product or device by servicing or maintenance specifically to extend the life of it and prevent known issues that would cause it to fail prematurely. Well, back to my fridge. I run it day after day, year after year. Never serviced it, never maintained it, absolutely nothing other than cleaning it until something fails. I don't spend a single penny on servicing. No one ever comes out to look at it. There's nothing I can do to extend the life of the fridge other than to not use it or not open the door. There is nothing maintainable or serviceable in my fridge. I run it, it then fails one day. When something fails, I have a look to see what it is. Now, if it's just a bulb, I'll probably replace it myself. They're fairly easy to do. You can buy them anyway, even B&Q, and you can install them. If it's a door mi micro switch, I might have a go myself, or I might get a fridge engineer to come out and do it. It's a relatively simple job. If the compressor fails or it runs out of refrigerant gas, I will most likely get a quote, and if it's sensible, I'll pay for the replacement or repair. If it's not sensible, I'll get a new one and get the old one recycled. There is a huge, huge difference between servicing maintenance and repairs. Ice cars have devices that require servicing or maintenance. EVs generally have none. There is almost nothing you can do to it that needs looking at regularly that would extend the life of the EV. OK, let's just turn to uh, MOTs to ram this point home. When I have my EV tested, I get a pass or fail certificate. In either case, I will get a list, if any, of advisories. These are advisories. For example, a bit of play in the suspension ball joint, a tyre wearing out. And the advisories state, well, it's perfectly safe to drive around, legal to drive around with it like this, but it is going to need repair or replacement sometime in the near future, possibly at the next MOT. So just be aware of it. It's just a heads up. If I ask the engineer, what could I have done to stop it, ball joint getting any play, thereby needing replacing, the mechanic says, well, nothing at all. There's nothing you can do to stop it wearing out. And having worn, there's nothing you can do today to stop it failing by next MOT or shortly after. It will fail. And when it fails, uh, the MOT, you need to replace it. 
that's an EV. There's nothing you can do to the battery, drivetrain, suspension, steering, brakes or anything that will stop them failing and virtually nothing you can do to extend their life expectancy. I say almost, you could drive around at 20 mile an hour, avoid curbs, potholes and try never to use the brakes. You see, in real life all of these devices will fail sooner or later. A nice car's the exact opposite. You need to carry out many tasks in its lifetime to prevent premature failure, i.e. the engine blowing up if you don't change the oil. Servicing and maintenance are largely preventative actions. They are additions or replacements to prevent a larger failure. Replace oil, longer engine life. Don't replace oil, shorter engine life. There's nothing on an EV that requires preventative servicing or maintenance. There is nothing you can do to a steering bush or suspension arm mounting that's going to extend its life or prevent it failing. It will fail. EV brake pads are another one often cited, a great example. There is nothing at all you can do to extend their lifespan. I'm talking about um, with, our, uh, with maintenance or servicing. We can obviously drive very carefully and not use them, but we normally drive until we get a warning, either from the device itself or from a mechanic, probably during an MOT test. See, most brake pads now have built-in sensors or gadgets to tell you when the pads need replacing. You don't even need to look at them anymore. You do not need a mechanic being paid £150 an hour. Well, of course he isn't. That's the garage being paid that. Now, if you ignore these warnings when the brake, brake pads are wearing out, you'll eventually get down to no friction material left and the metal pad is now pressing on the metal disc. Most people at this stage cannot ignore this. Yeah, it grinds away. It's pretty obvious it's wrong. And yes, you will now need to replace both the disc and the pads. But there was nothing you could have done by way of servicing or maintenance to prevent it happening. Only your drive style, driving style can do that. That's not servicing or repair or maintenance. Well, if you have a look through a list of service items that you pay three to four hundred pound for, it's virtually all check this, check that, check the other. The only items that are a true service item are oil and filter. So we get to uh, AC refrigerant and my AC failed recently. It just stopped blowing cold. Uh, it just blew the ambient temperature. I took it to Tesla and they drained it. They actually weighed the remaining refrigerant and found it was totally within the expected lifespan of the gas. They reckon they have a loss of up to 10% a year. My car's eight years old, so it would be expected to have lost about 80%. And at that point, it was touch and go whether it worked or not. Well, they drained it out. They pressure tested it for leaks. There were none. Um, that wasn't essential. That was for me and my point, uh, my peace of mind. If, if there was a leak, I was just wasting money, just pumping in more refrigerant. Anyway, there were no leaks. So this, for ice and EVs, is a system that we run till it fails, then top it up. There is nothing I could have done to stop the 10% loss per year. They all do it. Ice, EV, the lot. Yet it is an item on a typical service. How do they test it? I bet you my next wage packet that they don't drain out the old refrigerant gas, weigh it as part of the service, and if it's okay, put it back within the service. <laughs> I guarantee they start the engine, turn the AC on, if it's blowing cold, they tick the box. If it isn't blowing cold, they ring you up. Oh, by the way, you need us to do your refrigerant, we'll top it up for you. And of course, that's at extra cost. That's not part of the service. Now, for some people, they cannot or will not check things for themselves. And for them, if they're happy to do so, it's fine to put their car into a garage or the dealer, get them to do it for them. And £300 is probably not a fortune to many people when the oil change alone is likely to be around about £100 of that, possibly more. But when I used to drive ice, open the bonnet, they all had coloured items that I was required to check for myself. I think it was something like blue for coolant, yellow for oil, green for screen washer. I forget what colour the brake fluid cap was, but the service book said it was my job to check these levels once a week or month, whatever the interval was. And I always, well, usually did. Have we actually lost the ability to check these things ourselves? Or indeed, have modern ice cars removed these colours and the service book instructions now simply tell you, take it to a dealer who can do them much more efficiently and safely, but will charge £150 an hour for doing it. Well, let me know.
give us a comment below let me know what you think thanks very much for watching i'm dave if you enjoyed it please click the like button and please consider subscribing we're heading up towards 10,000 views possibly over it by the time this is released thanks for watching i'm dave